Hi, I'm Jay Goffner here, the Regional Technical Manager for Arbor Jetty College Hill, here in my home state of Iowa in front of a very large bur oak tree. This tree's got a great big canopy, really wide, very tall. It's about 40 inches in diameter, and we got a call about the health of this tree. And so we're here with the contractor. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to dive into what's going on with bur oaks in Iowa this time of year and what we can do about it. So let's dive in here real quick. All right, so we are low enough to the ground here on this branch that we can get a good look at what's going on with the rest of the tree. So burr oaks here in Iowa have a very distinct leaf pattern. So we want to identify the tree to start with. Burr oaks have a very noticeable indentation uh, near the stem of these leaves. And then the outside is kind of a round paddle-like leaf with wavy notches. So it's a very distinct leaf. And what we got going on this tree, if you look, we have obviously a lot of brown leaves, right? And we're in August here in the state of Iowa, August of 23. And we have these brown lesions on the tree. So this is burr oak blight. It is a leaf spot disease caused by Tabacua ioensis. And what I look for on these leaves is what's a very noticeable wedge-shaped lesion. And what I mean by that is the browning of the leaves is following the veins of the leaf in like a wedge-shaped pattern. Okay, so we have green leaf tissue over here. And then right when it hits this vein, it follows that vein and it turns brown on the outside. So that infection is blocking all that flow of water and nutrients. This part of the leaf gets very dry and crispy, okay? So here's another leaf, another good example, where it, right here on the vein is where it follows that vein and it causes this triangular wedge-shaped lesion. And we have this on uh, a wide variety of the leaves on this tree. It is really covering most of this tree here today. Okay, so when we're dealing with bur oak blight, what are we gonna do about it? Here in August, a fungicide application is not gonna be effective. We really need to time that application in the spring. So we're gonna come back to this tree in the spring and do a fungicide application with the F-Series unit and Propozole. We're gonna talk about that next spring. For now, we need wanna know what can we do today? And today, what we wanna do on this tree to set us up for success in the future is shortstop. And that plant growth regulator will really help this tree get healthy. Uh, you're gonna develop a, a much thicker waxy cuticle on the leaves, darker leaf structure, finer root hairs, all the plant health care benefits that this tree can use. And you gotta remember this tree is well over 100 years old. It doesn't need to get any bigger than it is today. So let's redirect some plant energy over the next three years to set us up for success when dealing with this pest. The other benefit of paclobutazole on these oak trees is that it also gets this tree healthy enough that two-line chestnut borer, which is a native insect here in Iowa, two-line chestnut borer really likes to attack stressed or dying oak trees. And so when we have a stressed tree like this today with the leaves already falling to the ground, it really opens the door for a pest like that to come in, hammer this tree, and potentially kill it. And we don't want to see that happen. So what we're going to do today is do the plant growth regulator, and then we're going to come back in the spring. And in the spring, we're going to reevaluate this tree as far as two-line chestnut board damage, if there is any. And we're also going to do the fungicide application. What I like to look for for two-line chestnut borer when I look in the canopy of this tree is I like to look for anything that is a tip dieback. Any little branches that don't have leaves on them is what I kind of look for. Fortunately, this tree looks really good. I really don't see two-line chestnut borer hitting this tree right now, but we're going to reevaluate as the leaves come on next spring and make, an, uh, make a decision at that time because triage R10 is tank mix compatible with propozole, so we can do that all at the same time. This tree is going to leaf out just fine in the spring. It's another concern with bur oak blight is, you know, is this tree going to survive? Is it going to be okay? And the answer is yes. Bur oak blight really doesn't kill these oak trees, but it does open the door for two-line chestnut borer to come in here and take advantage of the situation. We're not going to let that happen. So what we're going to do today is this uh, uh, shortstop application with our soil injector. I'm going to do that and show you how to do that now. We'll show you how you can um, uh, minimize the the concern on this tree for the time being for right now we're going to come back in the spring and we're going to do that fungicide application maybe an insecticide treatment at the same time we're going to add that to this video and we're going to monitor the health of this tree over the next couple of years and show the difference that we can make in these burrows all right so like i said we have a 40 inch 
diameter for oak tree. Our shortstop rate, uh, the ready to use solution, that RTU mixture is going to be uh, 150 milliliters per diameter inch. And so when we do the math on that, we need 500 milliliters of shortstop. And we need 5,500 milliliters of water. It's going to give us our 6,000 milliliters of that ready to use solution. Our soil injector, we've got it set to 150 milliliters per dose. It's a 40 inch tree. So we're going to do 40 injections around this tree with our soil injector. And I'll show you how fast and easy that is to do. So the take home message today and the key points are to make sure you're identifying burr oaks and make sure you're identifying them correctly. Make sure you're identifying the pathogen, which is Tabacua ioensis. Look for those wedge shaped lesions on the tree. Usually starts happening in late July, all of August. You'll see a lot of early leaf drop this time of year. Uh, then you want to make sure that you put the homeowner at ease by offering a solution today, which is making sure that we're doing the plant growth regulator. Our product shortstop is perfect for this application and it gets you in the door and sets you up for a program so you can follow up in the spring and make sure you're doing those fungicide applications at the correct timing. We're going to talk about that next spring. We're going to follow the health of this tree and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to see some really good results on this program here in Iowa. Thanks for watching.